Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I don't know about you, but when it comes to cooking, gardening, and decorating, I always aim for the best results for the least amount of cash. Today, I'm going to show you how I designed my formal herb garden on a modest budget. And by modest, I mean shoestring. You may be looking to make a similar garden for your own corner of the globe. Before we head outside, let me thank my friends at Garden Design Magazine for helping sponsor today's video. The magazine comes out four times a year and it's always filled with great content, gorgeous photography, and no advertising. To subscribe and receive a bonus issue, just click the link in the description box below. You can make a formal herb garden in any sunny area of your yard. I designed mine outside the north and west wings of the house. The house was built in 1826 and we've been restoring it for the past 15 years. Let me know if you'd like a video tour of the house. I love to have visitors. The herb garden is approximately 20 feet wide by 30 feet long. That's large enough to accommodate four raised beds, a table and chairs, and some rustic wood furniture, including a rocking bench. If you want to relax in your garden, be sure to include comfortable seating in its design. Flashback. Before the garden could take shape, I first covered the existing grass with cardboard. Cardboard and newspaper are two earth-friendly alternatives to chemical herbicides. Next, I built four raised beds out of the cheapest pine boards my lumber yard had to offer. Unlike hemlock and redwood, pine is not resistant to rot, but it does last a long time. I've only replaced the timber one time in 10 years. The beds are filled with equal parts topsoil, sand, and shredded leaves. It's a soil mixture that all plants seem to love. The paths between the beds are carpeted with pea gravel. Pea gravel, if you have never made its acquaintance, is the cheapest and most durable paving material in the world. And can we all agree that every garden needs a focal point? I found an old, rusted cast iron urn at a local auction house. I think it cost me $20 tops. I freshened up the urn with white paint and then placed it in the center of the garden. It looks great when topped with a big flowering plant, such as a supertunia. I love supertunias because they don't require deadheading. Just keep them well fed and watered and they will bloom and bloom until the first hard frost. This wine-colored variety is aptly called Bordeaux. Like all petunias, its large petals are sweetly scented. If you have woodchucks and rabbits on your property, I certainly do, you'll want to enclose your garden with a fence of some kind. My fence is simply galvanized wire mesh attached to pressure-treated posts. For a graceful entranceway, I marked the main gate with an arched wooden arbor. I found the arbor at a local independent garden center when it was priced at $235. I did not buy it then. Instead, I waited till September when it was marked down to just 50 bucks. And here's a tip. If you'd like to find high quality garden furnishings at rock bottom prices, be sure to visit your local garden center in September. Stores are making room for winter inventory then so patio furniture and the like is usually steeply discounted. And here's what's growing in the four raised beds. In bed number one, I planted romaine lettuce in the shape of an X. And in the nooks of the X, I planted red oak leaf lettuce. Who said salad greens can't be decorative? Bed number two contains a big clump of chives now in bloom. The pink petals are both edible and delicious. I use them to make one of my favorite condiments, chai blossom vinegar. Surrounding the chives are frizzee, spinach, and flat-leaved parsley. The third bed is filled with red and green savoy cabbage. The plants will be ready for harvest in mid-July. They're already forming heads. In the fourth and final bed, you'll find carrots and turnips. These root veggies are at their most delicious when they are small and sweet. Even the tops are edible. I turn carrot greens into pesto, and I like to saute turnip tops in butter and garlic. Yum. To give the beds a formal look, three years ago I took some stem cuttings from my boxwood garden, 
I'll show you that garden on another visit, and stuck them along the perimeter of the beds. The cuttings rooted in about eight weeks. To keep the boxwood small, I simply clip them once or twice each month during the growing season. Boxwood gives the beds an evergreen frame even during the winter months when the beds are otherwise empty. I hope you enjoyed our time in the herb garden and that you picked up a few design ideas along the way. I'll be using some of the produce from that garden in future video recipes. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and post a comment below. I'll see you next time with another episode of Delicious Living. Bye.